really rude. There she is. Here's the ping pong He's finals. Here is cool. He doesn't ever get mad at himself.
unto to the Lord, for he hath done wonderful things. This is known in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth.
Thank you. 
road way down the bottom, Aaron. Alright, got it. There's houses down there. There's buildings. He's not right on the edge, Mr. Lockwood. There's a thing that goes, he's got his feet resting. Yes. Here we are looking right over the edge. Aaron, <laughs> don't sit on that edge. Get up. You guys are goofy. Yeah, I don't like it. It puts me uptight and just out of right. I, I right. get it too much. Yes. Especially when you you're get it about other, other people. people. Yeah, I get it for other people. Right. I don't get it for myself. Right. <laughs> I've done some rock climbing with other people and puts me up there. Especially guys with cowboy and some walking in style. Larry, come up behind us here and get a picture of us all sitting on this rock. where the trail, where the uh, wheel trail goes down to that other rim. And, and then it goes down there down still either. further. want to come look. It has trees so we can't fall over. Oh. oh that's me. Well, <laughs> Sadie, <laughs> come out from under. We see him. <laughs> Let's all gather here and Aaron's going to take a picture of us. Let's so gather. Much wind I can stand. Shall we gather at the river? Folks, if you look just over my shoulder over here, you'll see a rock formation that's been here for many centuries. It's called Montezuma's Revenge. It's hi, hi. This is our little tour group. Everybody back on the bus now. Quickly. He I has acne. He has. Go near the cliff. He has phobia. There's a path down there. Right there is the mule trail. Look at those colors. This would be a great picture if I only had a good camera. It is windy out.
Uh-oh, the path disappears over the edge. Is this awesome or what? I've already seen it, but it's still awesome. Straight from where you're standing. Yeah, there's some. Sorry, did you take some pictures yet? Yeah, I've got 11. I'm surprised you could even stand it. doing it.
Des Moines, Washington. The piece I will be playing for you is an arrangement of 04,000 tongues arranged by my mother and myself. My accompanist is Mrs. Sherry Brookie.
prophet of God named Elijah. Elijah has been commissioned by Almighty God to preach righteousness and to turn his nation back around to God. The Bible says how he met with the wicked king Ahab, and there he called for a showdown to show who is indeed the true God of Israel. It was decided that the true God would be the God that would answer by fire. And so the state was set for God Almighty to show himself to his people. The Bible says that the prophets of Baal tried to no avail, calling upon their false god, but Baal remained silent. And then when it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah called upon God, and he called from, from heaven. And the Bible says that God sent fire from heaven, and it said that it licked up the sacrifice, it said that it licked up the stones, it said that it licked up the wood, it said that it licked up the water surrounding, and the Bible says that it even licked up the dust. Is it any wonder that Deuteronomy says, for thy God is a consuming fire? Yes, God is a consuming fire. And just as I see the fires of the Old Testament, I see three consuming fires in our day. Number one, I see an eternal fire. This is the literal consuming fire of hell. Is hell a real place? Well, consider what Jesus Christ said in Mark chapter 9. He said, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter into life me than having two hands to go into hell. And to the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Yes, according to Jesus Christ, hell is a real place. Hell is a place of fire. Hell is a place of judgment. Hell is a place of pain and sorrow. And my friend, hell is a place for eternity. The souls of men burning forever in a Christless black hole called hell. And my friend, if you're an unbeliever today, you can deny the fires of hell. You can ignore the fires of hell. You can explain away the fires of hell. But my friend, there's one thing that you will never do. And that is extinguish the fires of hell. If you are an unbeliever right now, and if you've got any common sense, you're asking me a question right now. That question will ask, how can I escape it? How can I avoid this awful place called hell? Well, my friend, nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on a cross, and there he paid the penalty for our sin. The Bible says that three days later he rose triumphantly over the grave. And today he offers salvation to you and I. Romans 10.13 says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The story is told of Dr. Oppenheimer, famous inventor of the atom bomb. Mr. Oppenheimer had just introduced his masterpiece of destruction to America, and he was in the middle of a press conference answering various questions. As the meeting came to a close, one final question was asked. That question was, Mr. Oppenheimer, is there any defense against the destructive powers of the atom bomb? Mr. Oppenheimer paused for a moment and very solemnly said yes, there is a defense, and that defense is surrender. And my friend, the only defense against the destructive fires of hell is surrender to Jesus Christ. But I see a second fire, a personal fire. This is the consuming fire of hardship. After a person is saved, God begins a process in his life to make him and to mold him into being the Christian that God would have him to be. How does he do this? He does this through the fires of trial. He does this through the fires of trouble. And he does this through the fires of tribulation. Why does God allow hardship into our life? Well, the answer is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, and verse 7. He said that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Yes, the Bible is very clear that the main reason for hardship in our life is for the purifying 
of our faith. When gold ore is mined from beneath the earth's surface, it is valuable, but not yet usable. It must be then taken and placed into the fire, and there it is made usable. Does a blacksmith do it and put it into the fire that it might be destroyed? No. He does it that it might be purified. And our Lord, as the master blacksmith, works hardship into our life for the purifying of our faith. Christian, are you going through the hardships today? If you are, claim God's strength. He's there waiting for you. And let it purify you. Let it mold you. Let it sanctify you. And let it mature you into being the Christian that God would have you to be. But I see a third and final fire. A revival fire. This is the consuming fire of hope. As I look out across this great land in which we live in, I see a land that is lying in darkness. I see a land that is lying in sin. I see a land that is lying in wickedness. And in the hearts of many Americans, there throbs a question. That question asks, is there any hope? Is there any hope for America? And so Americans vainly seek hope in politicians, and they find no hope in politicians. And they vainly seek hope in religion, and they find no hope in religion. And they vainly seek hope in humanism, and they find no hope in humanism. My friend, the only hope for America today is a Holy Ghost, Bible-based, sin-shattering revival. And like a mighty army, rising up against the evil one to turn our nation back around to God. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Yes, revival is the only hope for our nation. Over 200 years ago, a man by the name of Tom Dalton had an idea. His idea? To start a fire in the fireplace of his home and to have it continually burn on for the generations. And so the task of daily putting a log on that fire was passed down from generation to generation. And today, in that small Blue Ridge Mountain cabin, that fire still burns. But I think of another fire that was started in the 1720s by great men like George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards. The name of that fire was the Great Awakening. And then in the 1800s, great men like D.L. Moody put their law on that fire. And in the early 1900s, great men like Billy Sunday put their log on that fire. And in the 1960s, Dr. Donald Howard put that log on that fire. And my friend, today in the 1990s, it's time for the Christians of America to put a log on the fire. Where are you tonight? Are you saved? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? If you haven't, listen up. There's a hell, and it's real, and it's waiting. And if you're not saved, you're going there. Christian, are you going through the trials? Are you going through the heartaches and the troubles? If you are, let God purify you. Let those trials and those heartaches mold you and make you to be the Christian that God wants you to be. And finally, citizen, what are you doing for your country? My friend, the only hope for our country is to put a log on the fire of my heart and of your heart. And like Elijah of old, call upon God and let the fires of revival sweep across this land and turn our nation back around to God. God bless you. Christian Academy in Florida, and I shall recite for you the crucifixion by James Weldon Johnson. Jesus, my gentle Jesus. 
Jesus walking in the dark of the garden, the garden of Gethsemane, saying to the three disciples, Saul is in my soul, even unto death. Tarry here a little while and watch with me. Jesus, my burden, Jesus, pray in the dark of the garden, the garden of Gethsemane, say, Father, oh, Father, this bitter cup, this bitter cup, let it pass from me. Jesus, my sorrow in Jesus, the sweat like drops of blood upon his brow, talking with his father while the three disciples slept, saying, Father, oh Father, not as I will, not Let thy will be done. Oh, look at black-hearted Judas, sneaking through the dark of the garden, leaving his crucifying mob. Oh, God, strike him down. Why don't you strike him down before he plants his traitor's kiss upon my Jesus' cheek? And they take my blameless Jesus, and they drag him to the governor, to the mighty Roman governor, great Pilate, seated in his hall, great Pilate on his judgment seat, said, In this man I find no fault. I find no fault in him. And Pilate washed his but they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! His blood be on our hands. And they beat my loving Jesus. They spit on my precious Jesus. They dressed him up in a purple robe. And they put a crown of thorns upon his head. And they dressed it down. Oh, they pressed it. And they mocked my sweet King Jesus. Up the darkest rugged road, I see my Jesus go. I see him sink and leap a hole. I see my drooping Jesus sink. And then they laid hold on Simon. Black Simon, yes, Black Simon. And Simon bore the cross. On Calvary, on Calvary, they crucified my Jesus. They nailed him to the cruel tree and the hammer. The hammer, the hammer, rang through Jerusalem streets. The hammer, the hammer, the hammer, rang through Jerusalem streets. Jesus, my lamb, my sweet shivering as the nails go through his hands. Jesus, my lamb, my Jesus, shivering as the nails go through his feet. 
portray the guard and Christian. Philip Cox would play the role of the judge and evangelist. Misty Max would play the role of John Bunyan's wife, Elizabeth. And Hope Williams would play John Bunyan's daughter, Mary. And I'm Chris McKinney, and I will be John Bunyan. Unlearned peddler, a man of pause. How can you decide on the scriptures? Paul said that Timothy knew the scriptures as a child. 2 Timothy 2.15 commands, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If preaching the gospel, as commanded by our blessed Savior, is a crime, then I am guilty, Your Honor. Then depend on you, John Bunyan, as with all enemies of the King. Your crime, heresy, preaching without a legal permit. Oh God, in my own strength, I am I am weak and unable to withstand the uncertainty of my future. I pray, oh God, that Thou wilt uphold me according to Thy word, that I may live. And let me not be ashamed of my hope. Plead my cause and deliver me. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. I trust in thy word. Otter, are you? It's mortis, Mr. Bunyan. I'm sorry. I understand. Papa, we missed you. Won't you come home? They say you can't come home if you want to. Please come home, Papa. Oh, darling, if I only could. They want me to reach out and, and sign that license, but I can't. Mary, we must not ask your father to violate God's
written by Michael Hudson and Gary Driscoll. Suarez, Poe 
Christian School of Poway, California. Christopher Kill. <laughs> Robert Harris, Lewis and Clark Christian Academy. First place number one. <laughs> Sasha Lewis, Ross Brew Christian <laughs> farewell here with the Fitzpatricks Randy who are off <laughs> oh my the Jack Shuffle okay you can dress him up but you can't take him anywhere 
Hallelujah. Well, we've had a wonderful time. We've just received the medals, but the awards are still going on inside the Great Bigs Dome here. You can see the size of this place. It's gigantic. Ricky, press that button. No, press the other button. Stop right here. Okay, is it over? Yeah. Here's Aaron and Chris up to New Foolishness. Crazy Chris.
Chris, a different Chris. Nice bug. See what the head's eating. What are you eating, Dad? Mm, not very much. Oh, what's he eating? <laughs> All right, get the, go we'll, ahead. Get the uh, paintings up there. Take a bite. The what? Get the paintings up on the wall. Show them what the paintings are. The paintings? Where's the paintings? Oh, is that a painting? I guess it's a painting. Get Brother Oda. Where's Brother Odom? Oh, there he is. We're taking his pillows. Hi, Brother Odom. There, somebody I don't know. There's somebody. So we're, we can. Over there to show people how they get their food. They're what? Over there how they get their food. They come in here. Okay, eat Chris. Where's his food? Ooh. Gross. Here's give the lunchroom. That way we won't interfere with you. Chris. She offered to take me, huh? Really? She says you were going to drive us. Well, I don't know if I am or not because I'm flying. <laughs> but you can get the blue wings if you want. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. But are you, where, when do you graduate? Next year. Here's Becky. She won't eat because we're filming her. Becky Odom, people. Becky Odom. There's Becky Odom's food. Like a bird. something growing out of your head. <laughs> Aaron, I'm already filling. Oh, there goes my lost balloon. Thank Aaron you lost guys. it. It was have... so nice. Quit picking at my hair. Get a picture of Mount uh, San Francisco. There's her balloon, Dad. I see it, yeah. There, there is a mountain. That wasn't really the one. Hers is probably already in Albuquerque. <laughs> Get a picture of Mount. Mount on top of the mountain. Well, it's gone. See that? Snow. It snowed here. How nice. Alright, where's the beach? Is, that, is it on the arrows? It's on now. Yeah. Okay. Get ready to video it. I'm gonna do a cool move. Okay. I'm doing Kara first.
Oh, that was good. Who is that, Jacob? I really can't see too well. Here she goes. Woo! In the skim borders of St. Petersburg. Oh, Jacob's looking for a good wave. There he goes. Man, I gotta find me a perfect one here. Who's gonna get to go? day at the beach here. He's there and woo, up he goes over the way. There's Kara. Come on Kara. Let's do it. Here's Jonathan going, mommy, mommy. Aaron, he's looking for a good wave. Look at that concentration, and here he goes. Oh, he hits a perfect wave here. Oh, he does a spin, double spin. Oh, 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 oh. What do you call that? A 160 or something like that? A two, <laughs> I don't know, 320? For it, up oh, there's Carol. She wiped out. Who's screaming? I hear somebody screaming. Let's go. I can't think. Let's <laughs> scope it out here. There they are. There's a screamer right there. There's the little screamer. Oh, there's somebody skimboarding. Was it Joshy? Let's see if Joshy knows how to skimboard. Oh, there goes Aaron. And there are stingrays out here today. Let's see if Joshy knows how to do it. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Come on, Josh. Woo! Skimboarding on Treasure Island. Zarin! I hear somebody, but I can't find them. Ooh, look at it out here today. Summer heat. Such a steady camera here. <laughs> oh, look at those icky bikinis that just went through. As Jacob would say, they think they're so cool. What, Jacob? <laughs> Where's Aaron? I hear him calling. There he is. Doo -doo -doo, Mr. Beachman. There he is. Aaron the skimboarder. And there is Jacob the skimboarder. They look like brothers. Their bleached blonde hair. <laughs> Come on, Aaron, let's see what you can do. Let's go, Aaron. Can't hear me, obviously. Come on, Aaron. Waiting patiently. 
patiently for the perfect wave. I'll watch Kara. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Come on, Kara, let's see what you can do. There she goes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi, Kara. It didn't work. What were you trying to do? <laughs> Papa should be down here pretty soon. There's the little group of kids. There they are. Well, that's skimboarding on Thursday morning. <laughs> well, noon, actually. It's morning for these kids. They just got up a couple hours ago. Oh, I don't know who they are. There's Kara. Tina's watching Jonathan so I can take this picture.